This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. When we were discussing adjusted profits for tax purposes, I mentioned that depreciation is a provision or an estimate and therefore isn't allowed for tax purposes and needs to be added back to the net profit in order to find the taxable profit, along with a lot of other things. But assets depreciate in value and according to accounting principles, we must take that into consideration. Therefore, the revenue, while disallowing the depreciation, have allowed capital allowances. Now, over time, these capital allowances have been tested under law and we have here the main principles regarding capital allowances. They are, as it states here in this chapter, a tax version of depreciation. There you go, a tax version of depreciation. And they replace the disallowed depreciation charge, which we have dealt with in the previous chapter. And they give tax relief for the fact that the expenditure does go down in value. OK, plant, you will see the two words, plant, you will see. It is not something with green leaves on or flowers. It is an asset which is a, performs an active function within the business, includes office, furniture, equipment, anything movable. There are lots of legal cases related to this, but you don't need to know what they are, thankfully. You will also see machinery, which is what it says. It includes vehicles, computers, building alterations, um, anything to do with uh, equipment that you use within your, um, your business. There is a pro forma for this, and we will look at that in some detail later. But there are three types of capital allowance that you can claim. Um, and they are given to you in the tax tables, as I've said to you in previous chapters, never guess, because they change regularly, always check, very important capital allowances. So the first one, AIA, this is a 100% allowance for the first £1 million pounds of expenditure on plant and machinery within a 12 month accounting period. So basically what you're doing is writing off the expense of um, any equipment that you've bought, any plant and machinery that you've bought in that year in which you buy it. Anything in excess will qualify for what's known as a written down allowance. Now you can have not everything except cars, you can't have it on cars. And if your accounting period is smaller or longer for a sole trader, because sometimes it might be a little bit longer, then you proportion that million pounds um, accordingly. So it says there, for an example, if we have a three month accounting period only for some reason, then the limit is one million pounds times three twelfths. And if you have to do an apportion, always show your calculation. Very important that you show your calculation. Written down allowance, okay, most plant and machinery that doesn't qualify for AIA goes into a pool of equipment. We don't need to account for every single asset every single time. So unless there are specific rules for this, they all go into the same pool and they're all added together. So we don't know what's in the pool. And that pool of expenditure then gets a certain allowance. And if it's in the main pool, then it's 18%. If it's in the special rate pool, then it's 6% calculated on a reducing balance basis and it will be time apportioned. So again, it would be whatever the expense is times 18% and then you would again, if it was only a three month period and your calculation would look like that. Okay, now the day you buy something in capital allowances is totally irrelevant. It doesn't really matter the date you bought it, neither does it matter the date you sold it. Okay, that doesn't really matter. 
and cars. As you see, we can't have AIA on cars. Now, there are some special rules for cars that you need to be aware of. They are allocated to either the main pool or the special rate pool. So that will get an 18% and that will get 6%. According to their CO2 emissions, anything between 1 and 50 grams goes into the main pool. Anything over 50 grams goes into a special rate pool. Now we have new electric cars. That's new electric cars, 100%. Because obviously they're trying to incentivize you to buy them. So if you buy a new electric car, then you get the write-off of the complete expense in one go. If it's second-hand, then it goes in the main pool. And they never qualify for AIA. And your first, this is your first year allowance. Now, a first year allowance is what it says it is. A first year allowance. And it's the only one that is never time apportioned. So let's have a look at an illustration which shows us what we need to do with this. So, Richard commenced trade on the 1st of January 2023, prepared accounts for three months to the 31st of March 23, and then 31st of March thereafter. Richard made the following acquisitions of main pool assets. So, in that three-month period, he bought on the 1st of January some plant for 220000 and then later in the month, he bought some computer equipment. And then in the accounting year ended 31st of March 24. In May of that year, he bought some machinery for 30,000. So what does our pro forma look like? One of the important things with this is to make sure that you get the layout right. When you, you will have to do one of these in an exam. The same as you will have to adjust profits. It's highly examinable. Because it's the same rules for sole traders, for partners, and for limited companies with a few tweaks. There's normally a lot of marks because you have to determine where the asset goes in the computation, what allowance it gets. You then have to work that out. You have to deduct things from it. You have to do calculations from it. And you have to come up with an answer. So highly examinable. Um, topic this one. So it's very important that you spend the time going through this chapter and then through your BPP manual you do the chapter in there. Whether you do some exam questions at this rate I would just keep doing the learning first until you get closer to the exam. So three months ended 31st of March 2023. I've written that in there because that then I've taken the information from the question and written it in my answer because that then is a reminder to me that I need to do some time apportioning. I have three columns, an AIA column. Now that's a column for calculation only. And at the end of the day, that column will be empty. OK, main pool and then the allowances on the end. So. What we do is we always do the additions first. And I always put the dates in so that I can clearly tick them off from the question. I put them in, put them in. The plant and machinery and the computer and add it up. Now, three months means we need to time apportion that allowance. And I've shown there the calculation that I've come to. So three months out of the 12 times the million pounds. So the maximum written down allowance I can have is 250,000. And you'll notice that's been put there in the end column, the allowance column. Now, one thing I will say at this point, I personally believe that the brackets are important at the end column in the allowances column, because at the end of the day, this figure is going to be deducted from adjusted profits. And if you've done one of these computations, 
and you've put brackets around it when you copy that across to your tax adjusted profits you will copy across the brackets and it will be deducted simply by virtue that it has brackets on it you will find in the bpp manuals for whatever reason i do not know that there are no brackets on the end there are brackets here but no brackets on the end don't know why don't understand the logic behind it if you want to do it the way that bpp does it i don't have an issue with that but i always get my students um, to put brackets because when they copy it with brackets and put it in the tax adjusted profits in an exam situation when your heart's racing they will deduct if you take it across without brackets you might be tempted to add it on okay just saying so we've done the AIA now obviously we have fifty thousand pounds worth of expenditure which we haven't yet dealt with that's gone in here into the main pool and we're going to claim the 18 percent on it three months times 18 percent times fifty thousand gives us two two fifty we deduct that it's a it's a reducing balance method giving us a written down value carried forward so that's the tax written down value you can write t w d v you don't need to write it out in full of 47750 we add up the allowances column okay add up the allowances column and that is then deducted from your adjusted profits in the year ended 31st of march 24 there we go it's playing up there we go the tax written down value brought forward is our 47,750 during that period of time that 12 month period there was one addition we've copied that from the question and they're entitled to AI8 below a million pounds that goes across to here and again we have brackets and then the pool so this you notice this here it's empty at the end it's a calculation column only this pool carried forward we've got 47,750 pounds we are entitled to an 18 percent written down allowance and again you don't need to write these out in full normally i would get you to write everything out in full the very first time you ever do it and then brackets it put written down allowance brackets and then use that carrying forward but in a capital allowances computation you wouldn't need to so <coughs> excuse me 18 percent of 47,750 is 8,595 pounds take that across to the column add those two up deduct that from there and that will give you a written down value carried forward to be used in the next accounting period.